Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and in this video we're going to talk about applications of derivatives. So in the previous video we talked about several different types of differentiation rules. We had the constant function rule, the power rule, the constant multiple property, the sum of difference rules. In this video we're going to talk about some application problems involving the derivative. One of the most important applications that we'll be able to solve using the basic differentiation rules discussed earlier is that we can actually now find the equation of the tangent line at a point on the curve. So example six. We're going to find the tangent line. So this is the tangent line problem that we were talking about earlier in the course. Find the equation of the tangent line to this function, g of t equals 10 minus t squared, so this quadratic function, when t equals 2. So there's a few steps on this kind of problem. You want to find out what the equation is of the tangent line. We need to know what the slope of the tangent line is first, at t equals 2. So we know if we want to calculate the slope of the tangent line, we need to calculate the derivative of g of t. So let's do that. So if g of t is 10 minus t squared, then we take the derivative, so g prime of t, the derivative of 10, that's the constant function rule, the derivative of a constant is zero. So keep the sign between them, and then the derivative of t squared, you use the power rule. So the power rule said if you have a variable raised to a real number power, you bring the power down to make it a coefficient, so two, keep the t, and then you subtract one from the exponent. So two minus one in the exponent now. So if you simplify, you'll have negative 2t to the first power, or just negative 2t. That's the derivative of g of t. So now if we want to find the slope of the tangent line, you substitute in t equals 2, because that's where we will find the slope of the tangent line at. So g prime of 2 is negative 2 times 2, or negative 4. So the slope of the tangent line at t equals 2 is negative 4. So we actually have finished up the calculus part of this problem. So the rest of the problem is going to be what you've seen in the past in college algebra course. We know what the slope of the line is, but we need to know one point on the line, and then we can use what's called point-slope form for the equation of the line to calculate the equation of the tangent line. So let's do that. Let's find out one point on the line. We know we want the tangent line to pass through this point when t equals 2. So let's find out what the point is on the curve, the original function's curve, when t equals 2. So find the point on the curve and the tangent line, because the tangent line will also pass through the point that's on the curve at t equals 2. So plug in 2 into the original function to find the y value. So g of 2 is 10 minus t is 2, so 2 squared. And then you get 10 minus 4, which is 6. So the point that's on the curve, which will also be on the tangent line, will be 2 comma 6. So now use point slope form, which is y subtract y1 equals slope times the variable is t, so t minus x1. The point x1, y1 is 2 comma 6. So the y1 is 6, so y subtract 6, y is the variable, equals the slope of the tangent line we found out using calculus and the derivative, so negative 4, and then parentheses, t subtract x1 is coming from your point that's on the curve and the tangent line, so t subtract 2. Now the rest is just simplifying. Distribute the negative 4 through the parentheses to remove the parentheses, so negative 4 times t, negative 4t, and then negative 4 times negative 2 gives you plus 8. So now you need to solve for the equation for y to isolate the y on one side of the equation. So you have the equation of the tangent line. So y equals negative 4t plus 14. This is the equation of the tangent line when t equals 2. So let's see what that looks like with the graph. So if you graph the function g of t is 10 subtract t squared, so we know that's a quadratic equation where it's going to be, the graph is going to be a parabola that is opening down because the leading coefficient is negative in front of the t squared. And if we also graph the tangent line that we just found, y equals negative 4t plus 14, this is what the graph will look like. So you have the parabola that opens down. That's the g of t equals 10 minus t squared. We have the point 2 comma 6 that is on the curve that we found earlier. And we also know the tangent line is going to pass through this point 2 comma 6. So the tangent line just touches the curve exactly at 2 comma 6. And we found out using calculus with the derivative that the slope of this tangent line is g prime of 2, which was negative 4. And the equation of the tangent line was y equals negative 4t plus 14. So this tangent line will pass through the y-axis at 14, and it will have a slope of negative 4. So in the previous example, we talked about how to find the equation of the tangent line, or the tangent line problem. There are other types of problems that involve tangent lines that we can actually solve now using differentiation rules. So example 7. Horizontal tangent lines. This will come up as a big topic in the next chapter. So consider the function f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared subtract 15x to determine the x values where the tangent line to the curve is horizontal. 
So what that means is that you're trying to find all the horizontal tangent lines to the curve. That means find all the points on the curve where if you calculate the tangent line, the tangent line will be horizontal. So there's one thing we need to remember about horizontal lines. Horizontal lines, the slope is zero. So that means there is no vertical change in the graph of a horizontal line. So if our tangent line is horizontal, we want to find out where is the tangent line slope zero. So we know how to calculate the slope of the tangent line. You need the derivative. So calculate f prime of x, the derivative of f, and find out where is the slope zero. So set the derivative equal to zero because the derivative tells us the slope of the tangent line. So if we calculate the derivative using the basic differentiation rules, f prime of x is equal to x cubed is a power function. So bring three to the front to make it a coefficient, three x to the three subtract one. So subtract one from the exponent, keep the sign between the terms. So plus the next term, you have to use the constant multiple property. So there's a coefficient of three. You keep the constant three. Now use the power rule to take the derivative of x squared. So derivative of x squared will be two brought down to the front, x to the two minus one power, and then subtract. 15 is the constant, so keep it. And then take the derivative of x, which will be one when you bring the exponent down, x to the one minus one power. So if you simplify, you'll have three x squared, and then three times two is six, and then you'll have x to the first power. And then the last term will be 15 times x to the zero. And we've talked about x to the zero is just one. So three x squared plus six x minus 15 times one, or just 15. So three x squared plus six x subtract 15 is the derivative for this function f. Now we're not finished yet. We wanna be able to take the derivative and find out where are all the x values where the derivative is zero, or where is the slope of the tangent line zero. So the next step of the problem is Take this answer that we came up with from the derivative, f prime of x equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 15, set it equal to zero. And now solve the equation for x, because you want to find out what x values make the derivative zero, or the slope of the tangent line zero. So we know this is a quadratic equation. Let's try factoring first. So if you take this equation and you set it equal to zero, notice that all the coefficients have a 3 in common as the greatest common factor, or GCF. So you take a three out, you'll have x squared plus two x minus five left over. So if you continue to try to factor this, two numbers that multiply to negative five and the same two numbers add to two, they're not gonna be integers or whole numbers. So what that means is that we're gonna to have to solve this equation by using the quadratic formula. So notice that in a quadratic formula, you need to have this in standard form. So you have one x squared, so the leading coefficient is one or a equals one. The b coefficient is two, the coefficient in front of the x, and the c coefficient, or the constant term, is negative five. So let's remind ourselves what the quadratic formula says. The quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic equation, and the answers will be of this form. x equals the opposite of the coefficient b, plus or minus, square root, b squared to track four ac is inside the square root, and then everything is divided by two a. So if you substitute in the coefficients a, b, and c that we found earlier, you'll have this, negative two, plus or minus, square root, b squared, so two squared, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is negative five, all divided by two times a, or two times one. Now, if you simplify what's inside the square root, you'll have negative two plus or minus, square root, two squared is four, and then negative four times one times negative five is positive 20, and then the denominator is two, and then you'll have negative two plus or minus, Inside the square root is 24, so negative 2 plus or minus square root of 24 all over 2. So now we're trying to find the x values that will solve the equation. We know there's going to be two different solutions here because of the plus or minus. So let's find out what one solution is. So if you look at x equals negative 2 plus square root 24 all divided by 2, that will be approximately 1.45. So when you type this into the calculator, make sure you put the numerator in parentheses because you want those added before you divide by 2. So at 1.45 about you'll have a horizontal tangent line because the slope of the tangent line will be zero. And on the other hand, the other solution to the equation is x equals negative two subtract square root 24 all divided by two. And if you approximate this solution, you'll have negative 3.45. And again, make sure you have parentheses around the numerator if you type this into a graphing calculator. So at 1.45 and negative 3.45, you'll have a horizontal tangent line because the slope of the tangent line is zero. So those last two problems gave you an idea of how to calculate the derivative and use the derivative in an application problem involving the slope of the tangent line. So now let's talk about a couple other examples where you can use the derivative as an application problem. 
So example eight, memory rate of change. In a memory experiment, a subject is asked to memorize as many words as possible from a list in 10 seconds. The researcher of the experiment then tests the subject's memory, and the subject is then given another 10 seconds to memorize the list of words before te being tested again. The actions are repeated numerous times. Suppose the number of words remembered after t seconds of studying the list is modeled by this equation, so or this, fu this function, w of t, so that means the number of words memorized is equal to four times t to the two-fifths power, and t is the number of seconds after studying the list. Find and interpret the values w of 20 and w prime of 20. So notice that we have to calculate the derivative to find out what w prime of 20 actually means. Let's start off with the function. w of t is four t to the two-fifths power. That's given in the problem. Let's calculate the derivative. So notice that this is a constant times a power function, so we'll keep the constant when you want to find the derivative. W prime of t is keep the constant 4, and now use the power rule to take the derivative of t to the 2 fifths. So bring the exponent down, so 2 fifths is the coefficient, t to the 2 fifths minus 1 in the exponent, and now simplify. 4 times 2 fifths gives you 8 fifths, t, and now make sure you have common denominators so you can subtract in the exponent. 2 fifths subtract 5 divided by 5, because that's just 1. And then 2 fifths subtract 5 over 5 is negative 3 fifths. So 8 fifths t to the negative 3 fifths exponent. That's the derivative for this function w of t. So now let's be very careful on what we actually are plugging 20 into which function and what it actually means for the problem. So w of 20. So let's calculate w of 20. So if you put this into a calculator, w of 20 is 4 parentheses 20 around the base that you're plugging 20 in for the in for the t, raised to the 2 fifths power. It's about 13.26 if you round it to two decimal places. What that means is that t was representing the, the amount of time that the person had to study. That is 20 seconds. So if the person is given 20 seconds to memorize the words on the list, the w, or the y value in this case, is telling you how many words the person will actually will memorize. So that means the person will remember about 13 words. Now, on the other hand, if you want to calculate the derivative evaluated at 20, this is not the amount of words that the person will remember, okay? The derivative is representing an instantaneous rate of change or a rate of change in the amount of words memorized. So we have eight divided by five times 20 in parentheses that you're replacing the T with 20 this time, and it's being raised to the negative three divided by five power. That's approximately 0.27 if you round the two decimal places. So what that means is that the derivative evaluated at 20 is about 0.27. Let's talk about the units. The units should be in terms of the rate of change. So W was representing words memorized. So this will be words, her, and then the time was representing the T, that's in seconds. So it's 0.27 words per second. So now to interpret what this answer means, it means for each additional second that the person is given to memorize beyond 20 seconds, because we're talking about close to 20 seconds, so every additional second that's close to 20 seconds to so the person is given additionally, the person will remember an additional 0.27 words per second. So we've had an application involving the slope of the tangent line. We've also had an application involving social science with number of words that a person can memorize. Let's talk about an application from physics or physical sciences now. So in terms of a motion of a particle, if you can use differentiation, you can understand velocity and acceleration of this particle at any given time. So here's how you can, you can learn about velocity and acceleration. If the function lowercase s of t, if this represents the position or the motion of the particle at any given t, then if you take the derivative so s prime of t, you get what's called the velocity of the object or the particle. So the derivative of the position function or the position of the object gives you the velocity. The velocity tells you how fast the particle or the object is actually moving at time t. So in other words, the velocity of the particle is the rate of change with respect to time t. So in addition, if you find the rate of change of the velocity, in other words, how fast is the velocity changing at time t, then you get what's called the particle's acceleration. And acceleration is denoted with a lowercase a, so a of t is the derivative of the velocity function. So let's see how we can use these three different types of functions in example nine. 
the velocity and acceleration. The equation of motion of a particle is given by this function, which is representing position, because it's lowercase s. s of t is equal to t to the fourth, subtract 2t to the third, plus t squared, subtract t. This function measures the position of the particle, which is measured in meters, and then t is measured in seconds. Part 1. Find the velocity and acceleration of the particle as functions of time t. So the velocity function. We know the velocity is the derivative of the position function. So v of t is equal to s prime of t. In other words, we need to take the derivative of the position function that we were given in the problem. So let's use the constant multiple property and the power rule because you have several terms. We want to take the derivative of each term separately. So the derivative of t to the fourth, you bring the exponent down and make it a coefficient and then keep the t and subtract one from the exponent. So four minus one, keep the sign between them. Two is a coefficient or a constant, you keep it. And then you take the derivative of t cubed, you get three t to the three minus one power plus, and then same thing for t squared, use the power rule. Two comes down to make it a coefficient. Keep the t, subtract 1 from the exponent, t, 2 minus 1, subtract, and then the derivative of t is 1, t to the 1 minus 1 exponent. So if you simplify, you'll have 4t cubed for the first term, subtract 2 times 3 is 6, so 6t squared for the second term, 2t to the first power for the third term, and then subtract t to the 0. And we know t to the 0 is 1, so that means the velocity, v of t is 4t cubed, subtract 6t squared, plus 2t, subtract 1. The acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity. So if you take the derivative of velocity function, you get acceleration. So in other words, if you take the second derivative, and the second derivative is represented with a prime prime, so two apostrophes means second derivative. So if you take the second derivative, so derivative twice, of the position, you get acceleration. So let's take our answer from what we just came up with, velocity, and take another derivative. So acceleration is, you keep the 4, which is the constant, and then you take the derivative of t cubed, you get 3t to the 3 minus 1, using the power rule, subtract, keep the 6 as the constant, the derivative of t squared is 2t to the 2 minus 1, again using the power rule, plus 2 is a constant, so keep it, the derivative of t is 1t to the 1 minus 1 power, and the derivative of negative 1 is using the constant function rule. The derivative of a constant is 0. And again, simplify. 4 times 3 is 12, so you have 12t squared. Subtract 6 times 2 is 12, so you have 12t to the first power for the second term. And then the third term is 2t to the 0, which we know is 2 times 1 because t to the 0 is 1. And so the acceleration will be 12t squared. Subtract 12t plus 2. And so the acceleration will be 12t squared, subtract 12t plus 2. All right, in the last part of this problem, we're going to talk about what does it actually mean, position, velocity, and acceleration for a particle. So part two, determine the position, velocity, and acceleration of the particle at t equals 2 seconds. So let's talk about position function first. So this position function was s of t, the function that we were originally given in the problem. So if you plug 2 into this, it's like finding the y value. So s of 2 is 2 to the fourth. Subtract 2 times 2 to the third, after you replace the t with a 2, plus 2 squared, subtract 2. If you calculate this, you'll come up with 2. The position function is measuring the position of the particle. And it told us in the problem that the position function is measured in meters. So this is 2 meters. Now the velocity function. The velocity function tells us how fast the particle is moving. So v of 2, so you take the velocity function and you plug in 2, which was the derivative of the position function, evaluate at 2. So take all the t's and replace them with 2. 4 times 2 cubed, subtract 6 times 2 squared, plus 2 times 2 minus 1, and you take all the t's out and replace them with a 2. When you calculate this, you come up with 11. Now let's talk about the units. The velocity is a rate of change. The rate of change is measured as the y value for position was in meters, and the denominator is in time. So this will be meters per second. That's the speed of the particle at two seconds. So at two seconds, the speed of the particle is changing at 11 meters every second. And now the last one, the acceleration. Take the acceleration function, and we want to evaluate at two seconds again. That's the derivative of the velocity function evaluated at two seconds, or it's the second derivative 
of the position function evaluated two seconds. So take the acceleration function and replace all the t's with a 2. 12 times 2 squared, subtract 12 times 2 plus 2. If you calculate this, you get 26. And now I'll talk about the units again. The velocity was measured in meters per second. So that's the numerator for the rate of change for acceleration. And we're talking about what's the change in the velocity over time. So this is meters per second, another per second. So notice that you have per second twice. So you can rewrite this as 26 meters per second squared. That tells us how fast the velocity is changing for the particle at two seconds. So this finished up our video on applications of the derivative. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about increments and differentials.